Hey guys, BAKD here. Um, with T9 approaching very quickly, we're going to go over the uh, Stealth Bomber Nemesis 2. This guy is an absolute powerhouse built for destroying stations and large battleships. Um, that's where these are the most effective. If we go over the uh, Roll bonus here, you have a negative 99% large torpedo power grid. That means you can equip the largest of the torpedoes on this ship, which we are doing C-type large torpedo launchers. Um, the explosion radius is extremely high on these, so I would expect a hard time trying to hit um, anything small even a normal cruiser, it's not going to apply that much damage. I really would like to try this out on retrievers and see how much damage we can apply. Um, if we go back into our skills, though, you have a 50% device cloaking device reactivation de delay, so you can uh, reactivate your cloaking device a little bit quicker. Um, 15 seconds to reactivate it. Um, we also have a 100% cloaking device lock delay removal, so you can um, basically unstealth and immediately lock onto the target. Going down a little bit further, per large missile torpedo upgrade, um, this is just the regular skill, large missile torpedo upgrade. I would recommend that to at minimum 4 out of 5. Um, but if you want to get the most benefits out of the ship, you want five on that. Um, the minimum to fly this ship, I would say, is four four on advanced, and then uh, expert is going to be an extremely long skill to train. So four four is probably the minimum. Now, most people flying frigates are going to have a expert frigate command bonus. Um, most people only have three or four out of five on that and this one gives you a negative five percent inertia modifier which isn't the biggest deal in the world but this makes it the most maneuverable um, stealth bomber out of all of them it's not the fastest but it, it can uh, get to speed quicker and i'll show you a few few builds that will work very well with this ship and we'll uh, kind of explore different ways to build it. It's not necessarily the correct way, but it's going to show you a lot of different options so then you can choose how you want to fit your ne nemesis. Um, the first one is our kind of long range or mid range with three uh, target painters. Um, this build will not be scramming or disrupting anybody or webbing them. You're going to kind of sit off at a distance at a uh, smaller or a medium distance and just lob off your torpedoes. On the low slots, I did a C-type ballistic control system just for the extra damage. You're not going to be uh, getting hit much with this one. You'll kind of just be on the back lines. I did equip a Mark V medium afterburner due to that uh, inertia modifier. This will help you uh, get up to speed faster and make this a little bit more usable on this ship. Um, if you slot a power grid rig on there, um, you can get a little bit better um, afterburner. I think you can go up to like a smuggler. But just remember, I'm 555 everything right now, so that includes um, torpedo launchers. So you might have to do two rig slots uh, for power grid just to fit that. Or adjust some of them, do a smaller torpedo, etc., or a smaller ballistic control system, and just kind of min max your power grid. So just uh, take that into account. <laughs> Now on my uh, rig slots, I'm going to go over a bunch of different rigs you can put on there. Like I said, it's not the best option, but it kind of shows you what this thing can do. This guy, I did four of your explosion, well, three of your explosion radius uh, bonuses reduction. Um, this will give your explosions a little bit tighter uh, explosion radius. So you can hit slightly smaller things 
on top of applying basically all of your damage to battleships and battle cruisers and stuff. On these slots, I did a velocity modifier, a inertia adjustment, and I did another velocity, which I'm actually going to slot a, uh, another polycarbon on there for the inertia because I'm doing that T3 because um, I'm doing the medium afterburner on this build. So let's just undock and see what this thing can do real quick. Alright, so we're going to get engage our medium afterburner and see how quickly we get to speed. Let's see, we are... We're banking fairly slow, but um, at least we don't have the micro warp drive on just draining our cap. We're getting up to 2655 meters a second, which is bad. Isn't that bad? We have 474 DPS on this baby cold. If we pop our ballistic here and go ahead and look, we get up to 613 hot, which is pretty darn good. We also do have the cloak on, so we can cloak up and uh, do that. Let's go ahead and pause our engine. Let's go ahead and gauge our bombard mode. And if you pause the video, you can see all the bonuses it gives. We have 678 DPS now um, in our bombard mode. Let's go back in with now without the ballistic control system on it drops to 526 now the um, you see all the differences we have 57 kilometer range on this this is the mid-range build we are going to equip uh, range rigs to see how far we can shoot these in just a minute the explosion radius does substantially increase, so this will only be for shooting stations and very large targets. If we take that off and look back on here, wherever the heck it went targeting. If we look, our exploder, explosion radius is substantially smaller now, 215, which is still big, but um, we only have a 21 kilometer range now, so it almost doubles it. So I'm going to take this into Anomaly really quick, and we're just going to shoot some missiles and then go re-rigger up. And here we go. Let's go into a Teton Blood Raider with our three target painters. Let's go ahead and attack the Abaddon. Abaddon, whatever it is. Let's launch one over at him. Oop, we're not even close enough. Let's approach this baby. Uh oh. Okay, let's launch one of those. 4,400 damage. It's not too shabby. I'm actually just going to leave my afterburner on. Let's go ahead and take the ballistic control there. 4,480. I probably didn't get that up in time. Let's uh, do our bombard mode now. Forty-one hundred, so it actually does a little bit less to this. Okay, let's take that off. Thirty-three sixty-three. Now let's go try to approach one of these executioners. Actually, let's.
let's do this. Launch one more. Yeah, so it doesn't increase it that much. Let's go ahead and lob a missile at this executioner that's moving extremely fast. Two hundred and eighty one damage. So let's target paint him up. Four hundred and twenty, so it doubles the damage with three target painters on there. Okay, let's uh, head back to the station. Let's refit this uh, slightly different and see if we can uh, do something else with this. All right, so the next build here. Um, of course, I still have my three target painters. This is going to be the long range uh, bomber mode. So you sit back as far back as you can and lob missiles off. Um, this will be great in long distance uh, warfare. Having a bunch of these on the back lines just shooting off uh, missiles is going to be extremely powerful, especially when they come across a battleship or a faction battleship. If you have five or six of these just shooting off in, in a bomber mode, um, it's pretty OP. So down below, uh, for the longest range, I've tried a few different... Uh, variations but if you do two flight velocities and one flight time gets you the longest range um, missiles that you can shoot um, these are all negotiable you can do targeting rigs power grid semiconductor which you won't even be using polycarbons so really whatever variation you want there, you just need to get into position, bomber mode, and then just start lobbing them off. Um, I did equip a small micro warp drive and a small afterburner just to see how fast it's going to go. Um, but let's check our missile range right now. We are at 28.9. Let's go ahead and undock and test this out a little bit. So we'll pop that and our afterburner. So this is a pretty speedy ship. We're going about 1400 meters a second with our C-type afterburner. Not too shabby. Now I'd recommend if you did a micro warp drive and you're going to be using it frequently, I would do the uh, negative capacitor um, engineering rig. Um, so you can save a little bit of cap whenever this activates. It does increase your cap by quite a bit when you equip that. But we are going 2800 meters a second with only one velocity rig on there. So that's pretty quick. But that is 555 micro warp drive. So that's not too shabby. Now let's go ahead and enter bomber mode. And check this baby out. So we are at 72 kilometers range on this, which is pretty intense. So let's uh, let's go back into our anomaly. I know that uh, rat only has a few hits left, but I'm gonna shoot a few from a long distance. Warp drive active. Now these ships target extremely slow. I'm not sure why the targeting on this is so awful. Um, so I would definitely recommend a targeting rig on this ship as well. And I'm going to be going over that in just a second with a different kind of up close and personal build. So I don't want that on yet. Let's approach him a little bit. Let's just go to 65, turn that off, bomber mode, turn that on, and let's lob one off, hopefully before dying. OK, 
Okay, we're just about to pop. 3,400, so it's not the most damage. Eh. Okay, let's, let's get out of here before we blow up. But that is uh, fairly good. We were able to warp extremely quick because this ship has a good inertia modifier. If we see our warp preparation time is 1.74 seconds, which is pretty good for a stealth bomber. I do have two inertia mods plus that roll bonus you saw. Alrighty, yo, let's get into our last and final build on this baby. Now, I will have just one modification to this build in just a second, um, but this is kind of like the Retriever or Orca or whatever hunting. Um, eventually, we are going to have a buttload of these ships flying around and mining, like the Procurer and the Covertor. Um, these ships are slightly larger than the retrievers, so hopefully the damage is going to apply to these a little bit better. Um, I'm not sure how well retrievers are going to get hit by these, but I'm hoping they get a fairly decent chunk of damage applied. Um, they're not going to be moving too fast. I know like frigates and stuff, any type of venture, you're going to have just the smallest amount. A damage applied from your missiles so I wouldn't go hunting venture threes in this and I'm really curious how retrievers um, like I said would take the damage of these missiles so how I have this guy fit I went a damage 17.5 percent activation time for that added DPS and I did a explosion radius bonus now, of course, you can also swap one of these out for a explosion velocity bonus. This will help you hit frigates or anything moving slightly better. Paired along with one of these, you will be applying your damage much better. Now, since these do lock piss slow, 100%, I would put a targeting sub controller on there to lock a little bit faster out of stealth. Um, this ship does give a bonus to your inertia modifier, so I'd always do the inertia. And then this last slot is for you to choose. You can do like a velocity adjustment. Um, I will kind of go over like a brawling build with this thing in just a minute here. But let's uh, repair our ship and get back out there. All right. So we are now warping out. I'm going to go ahead and cloak like we're warping into a mining belt. You're going to go after this uh, mining retriever right here. Let's go and approach it to 15. These ships actually go fairly quick in stealth. You'll see this guy's going uh, almost 600 meters a second, which is pretty good. And I'm going to just check my missile range. 21 kilometers, so I'm going to get... Uh, it's about that 15 mark before unstealthing. I do have micro warp drive to get in and out if I get unstealth quickly. But the benefit to this is you have three mid slots for scrams. Okay, I'm just about ready to hit him. I'm going to uncloak. Lock this baby. If I got uncloaked, I can get a little bit closer with that micro warp drive. Scram him. And off he goes. 4,900. And oh crap, we got some protectors, so let's get out of here. Woo! No. Uh -oh. Oh, there goes the nemesis. But okay, I'm going to go through one more build in just a sec here. I'll be right back. Alright, so this is how I'm going to be rolling around in my hound or nemesis or stealth bomber. Um, I'm going to be carrying one target painter, one scram, 
Now this other slot, I put another scram in. This is definitely good if you're hunting miners in a duo, but I would also put a web on there to apply a little bit more damage from your missiles if you get tagged off by something small. You're probably gonna die. Um, these missiles aren't going to stand up to a small weaponry that a frigate would have, but it will give you a, a chance, to say the least. Of course, you have your small or your cloaking device. I fit this with a medium shield booster. Now, you might not have the power grid for this because I am 555 engineering and shield on here. Um, so, I even had to do a tier 3 power grid rig. Um, you can move down your modules. This doesn't have to be a C-type micro warp drive. This doesn't have to be a, a C-type shield booster. These can be smaller missiles. You have lots of power grid to play with and mix and match your equipment. But the medium shield booster is pretty nice because it's 365 per tick. And your shields are uh, 1,000 shield total. Now for the rig slots, of course you can do anything from uh, DPS to um, EM resistances, any kind of tank you want, but the best fit that I found for my stealth bomber is one explosion radius bonus, it's negative 14%. This modification is designed to decrease the signature radius factor of your missiles explosions paired with explosion velocity bonus 15 percent this ship modification is designed to decrease the effects of the targets velocity in avoiding the radius of missile explosions so if something's moving at you that will definitely that pair right there will be pretty deadly um, and a activation time gives you more DPS than the actual uh, we can just put it on just really quick but we are at 503 and if you do a damage instead of an activation time which are better for alpha hits but you get less hits per minute you see we go to 484 DPS, so it's actually better to have the activation time on there. And you see our capacitor is fairly small on this, 23 seconds. So we're going to go ahead and just hop out of the station really quick and activate it. I'm not going to go shoot any more battleships because you kind of already know what it does. And we'll do our micro warp drive and our shield booster. So it's not going down too entirely slow. You probably don't have your micro warp drive on all the time, but you see it's about 10 to 15 percent capacitor per tick. So this will keep you alive for a little bit of time, but not forever. Um, usually not going to be in long drawn out fights in a uh, nemesis in the first place but you can swap that out for a shield extender I don't think the medium ones fit on there unless you did like a mark 5 medium shield extender works good it does basically chew your cap up if you do equip that if you saw 700 capacitor just about and we go to our extenders even a medium one does 553 gigajoules activation. So you might need some ca capacity rigs um, instead of a power grid. Semiconductor memory cell is good. Oh, it's already on there. So yeah, that would just chew your <laughs> capacitor right up. So potentially swapping this to a small shield extender or a uh, small shield booster might keep you in a fight longer uh, capacity wise, but yeah. All right, guys, that's all I have for you. That's just comparing a bunch of different um, rigs and weaponry on this baby. Um, I am excited for T9 to hit any day now pretty much. And hopefully this guide will kind of guide you in the right way to fitting your Nemesis 2 out. 
I'll see you in the next one. Peace.